Met you. I've noticed that you have this large chain. What is that you're... That? Boy, that's your little trinket you got there. Yeah, those are my baby teeth. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? It's spectacular. Well, uh, I, 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 do, I make jewelry. I did these things. I did all this stuff, the mountings and stuff. Look at this little I'm, tiny diamond he's got here. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that'll get you hit in the head tonight, let, you know. Let's no. see this, right? <laughs> Wait, you know, not, not, yeah, you can put it on. Isn't that... Yeah, isn't that nice? You made this. Yes, not the stone, but... I mean, no. they, uh, <laughs> then I did all... I did this, a little wedding ring, and I don't have my watch. I had a, a watch that I painted a clown on, and I was with Michael Jackson, and he said, Oh, okay, what a lovely watch. I said, You want it? He said, well, I said, It's yours. I said, No, you can have it. So I gave it to him. You so know. you just... I know, I understand. I was, I was reading once where somebody admired one of your Rolls Royces and you gave it to yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think your Rolls Royces are beautiful. Too. I got another one. <laughs> yeah, I have, I have another one. I, I, give you, I give you one of those little Japanese cars, you know. You know, that was so funny. The Japanese says that the Americans <laughs> were lazy and, uh, and right. kind of stupid. Right. And I was riding in one of those little Japanese cars the other day and it was a horrible pounding. And we raised up the hood, and here's this little guy still working on the motor. <laughs> there's another side to your life. You know, there's a, a fascination with clowns that you have. Obviously, so many of these paintings are of clowns. Mm -hmm. Well, I do still lives, landscape, portraits, everything. And you, it was often said that you were quoted saying you did paintings because they sold real well. People well, the clowns, they sell yeah. better than anything. How yeah. much do they sell for now? Well, um... Are we yeah. 40 to 50 to $100,000? Yeah. Uh huh. I, I get embarrassed, you know. Do you? That's why I, I, I send them to the guy. I have uh, 36 galleries in the States and 21 in Canada. Yeah. You're saying you have so many different talents. You're an extraordinarily talented, well, gifted man. Not really. Not really. <laughs> oh, no? I don't do anything you can do or they couldn't do. You put your mind to things and you can do it. You know? Do you believe that? Oh, yes. But you were such a determined person. I remember reading that you started painting by. I mean, you were poor by cutting your own hair. Yeah, I made off my brushes. From your I, own I hair. I would take the. I used to stay in after school and clean all the paint pots and stuff and put it in little jars for myself, you know. Right. And then I would go home and I'd cut big hunks of hair from behind me and I'd put it on and and, and then take a, a pencil or a, a, a twig and wrap around and make brush. Had hairy paintings, but they went. <laughs> <laughs> but then I started painting. I must have. Uh, oh, I would say. 3,000 brushes that have never been used. 3,000? Yes. And I said to my wife, why is it when I go buy an art store, I have to buy brushes? She says, because when you were little, you couldn't afford them. Sure, that would make sense. Yeah. So Maybe you figure if you buy brushes, you'll keep more hair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to need it. I'm going to need it. Yeah, I'm getting to the point now, like, I'm with him. <laughs> with us, it's no more head and shoulders. It's now mop and glow. <laughs> Brad Skelton is in town at one of the 75 shows he does a year. You're here doing three shows at the O'Keefe Center, and you couldn't get a ticket if you wanted. They are sold out. They're now scalping tickets. As they did in Ottawa, they were scalping them outside yeah. for $100 a seat. Yeah, well, they did the last time I was here. Now, if they weren't sold out, I wouldn't have come on. I know you told me that in Banff. You yes. said you won't, you won't come unless they're sold out. Now, yeah. why is that? Well, because it looks like I'm trying to promote something. The other way, I like you, and I'm here to visit with you. That's ex. You yeah. are so... I'm not promoting anything. But, but at this point, when you are... You are a living legend. You're one of the most famous... Some people are famous, and some people become part of history of the world. And you are part of history. Well... Nobody would ever think you were promoting anymore. No, I'm not. Well, I know, but... But to be so sensitive about it that, you know, yeah. you wouldn't even want people... You're very sensitive to that yeah, kind of stuff. Yeah, people shouldn't come on and visit with someone just to uh, be nice and, and say, but you were nice to me and you, you gave me attention, although there was somebody there that's far more important than I was. You know, the young comedians today, what they do after the show is over, they live with that applause and that stuff that they did all day. When I finished my performance, now like last night I did it, and everybody was wondering why I came out... When the show is over, I walk into this empty auditorium and there's no applause, there's no echoes of laughter, and I say to myself, an hour ago I was important. Tomorrow I must start again. See? Do you really? Yes, because uh, um, most actors suffer with eye trouble. I did this, I did that. I did this. <laughs>
But you're a very gentle, very lovely lady. You're like my wife. Well, we've been married a good many years. And I'll tell you an interesting thing. We've only had one serious argument. And I, but I learned a great lesson from it. When we were first married, I got angry, and I took a swing at her. And I didn't see her for about five days, and then finally my eyes started to open. <laughs> <laughs> You know, you the, should my, tell them how you met your wife. It's a yes. rather extraordinary story. My uh, my wife and I, I've known her all of her life. I used to go visit her father, Greg Tolan, who did Citizen Kane, Best right. Years of Our Life, Withering Heights, at five Academy Awards, this gentleman. And she and, was just uh, a little thing. She was a tiny little thing. I used to go over and visit, and I pushed her around in her stroller. Now, my wife that I was married to for 28 years knew that she was dying, and she said to Lothian, if you see your way clear, you uh, take good care of him and don't let anyone hurt him because you know him better than anyone. See? Then uh, she waited until the day our son had died with leukemia 10 years later, and uh, she couldn't stand the pain anymore. The medications wasn't, uh, weren't helping. And so uh, she took her own life, and she left a note. The reason I chose this day is so that you won't feel bad twice in one year. I don't know. You told me that. You're a man who's had such incredible success in your life and such, and have given so much happiness to people, and yet the story, you've had so much tragedy in your own life. You lost your Not own really. son. Not really. We all have yeah. it. But you've had your fair share and maybe a bit more. You lost mm. your only son to leukemia. Yes. Yeah. No. And they said that you couldn't entertain any more children's hospitals after that because no. it was just too no. hard for you. Uh, I, I'm a, a Shriner, a 33rd degree Mason, and um, I give the Masonic Lodge $250,000 a year to let me alone. Because they, yeah, they come into town, they say, well, you come out and visit the children at the hospital. They don't know me, you know, and I, I've got legs worse than some of the kids, you know. And so I just say, and I, but I help them raise monies and stuff, you know. You know, I, an You do wear steel braces on your legs, and yes. that's, that's the price that the clown 30, pays? Over finally? 48 years I've worn these things. That's like from that, all those falls you used to yeah, do? Yeah, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't pay any attention to it. I hurt in the daytime, you know, but... Uh, then when I get ready to go on the stage, there's some like a magic that comes, and I don't feel anything until after the show's over. <laughs> then they have to carry me. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the day of your show in Banff, and you do this, and uh, every time you have a show, you stay in your room for a couple oh, of hours. No, you... I stay in my room all day. You have a whole process you go through. Yes, and I play the tapes, and I like the show I did last night before I do my show here. I will play that tape, because there'll be things in there that, that I've never said before. And I ad lib right on, on the stage, you know. And I go out, and no matter what I put in the show or take out, the show still runs two hours. And I, I can't time. <laughs> we found a new joke. See? I say, um, he says, uh, been out here for an hour and a half, my conductor. And I say, I haven't been out here an hour and a half. I haven't. And the audience yells, no, no. So I, then I say, um, I've got one more thing I want to do. Would you bring me a chair? And so instead of bringing it out, they throw it out on the stage. <laughs> And I look at it. And I look off stage and I look at the chair again and look at the audience and say, yeah, hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> like they want to go home. You know? <laughs> We're going to take a break. When we come back, a wonderful story about how Red Skelton uh, started in the visit it has to do with a wonderful man called Ed Wynn. We'll tell you that story right after this. Uh -huh. okay.